All right, welcome back to the show. I'm Jason Whitlock. He's Marcellus Wiley. It's time to put on our thinking caps. All right, we're joined by Virginia Tech's very own D'Angelo Hall mm. and Ohio State's very own Iceberg Jim Jackson. Mm, mm, okay. As you all know, I'm a journalist, and we've got our resident Ivy Leaguer, Marcellus Wiley, <laughs> here. So we're going to take a deeper look at some big issues in sports. All right, we got a special cap for our Columbia grad who is yet to provide his transcript. Oh, <laughs> oh what do you mean? <laughs> I'm going to turn this into a controversy like uh, Obama's birth certificate. I want to see your transcript. Boy, they'll go back and take some wins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No. Let's move to college football, where the University of Miami is looking to return to prominence after a couple of years in the wilderness under former coach Mark Rick. New coach Manny Diaz has already had some struggles in this year's recruiting, landing just two of, Miami, of the Miami area's top-rated prospects. But Diaz offered an interesting explanation for the school's recruiting woes, saying, quote, Look, the world has changed, and I'm going to blame the NBA. Once Kevin Durant went to the Warriors after they were up 3-1 when he was at the Oklahoma City, kids want to go where the winning is. All right, <clears throat> he's getting ridiculed for this, and and, and I mean, exactly, I disagree. Oh, I, th oh, I, I, I don't think he should be ridiculed. I think Kevin Durant and LeBron James mm. made it fashionable to go chase the easy path and go team up. Once huge icons of that level take the easy route, you think kids don't think the same thing? But. Won't you educate those kids and say the GMs used to do the same thing as these powerful players? And you know what? This is how sports has always been. Um, dynasties have been created, and, and, and Diaz should know this. His, <laughs> his dad was the former mayor, and he sounded like he politicking. You know what I'm saying? He sounded like he on the campaign trail. Why you won't stay here and go to the U? In the U, of all places... They used to feed off of this same mentality. They yeah. used to feed like, off, yeah, where yeah. the you? Yeah. Come yeah. where the winning is. The you, you with the I mean. attitude. That of was a homegrown, built-up program. Nah, they scratch. almost went and got me. It, well, well <laughs> I'm talking about before you. And oh, that's I'm the problem. Saying. That's my bigger issue. I don't even want to stay on this surface level. The bigger issue is don't tell these kids to stay still. Don't tell these kids and stifle their growth to say, y'all got to stay local or else you're selling us out. That's putting pressure on the community. And it's always been that way. Since I played with a lot of teammates, Dade County and all that, I'm like, Leave Dade County. You're like, I'm from L.A. Go. Leave L.A. Like, it's okay to leave and go somewhere. If you want to leave and go somewhere, I'm going somewhere that has success, that has something to offer. University of Miami, and it's going to sound like a diss, but I diss people. <laughs> you're not that great in football, and you're not that great academically. So what's the, what's the attraction Ooh. being there? Being real. <laughs> Shots Look, fired. If we have a college system that has a BCS, we also have one called the U.S. News and World Report. If you're not ranked top 25 in both, what are we doing here? So, I mean, a lot of issues that came from this, and he's smart and enough Ivy to Ivy League eliteness coming out. Go yeah. ahead. Well, a little bit. I mean, Miami, <laughs> you know, something. Miami being, being a Virginia Tech guy, Virginia Tech grad, Virginia uh -huh. Tech football player, Miami was always that uh, Golden State Warriors. They were the, 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 you know, the team that had all the players, all the first-round mm -hmm. players, and we were like the blue-collar guys who were going to go in there and try to, try to beat the dynasty. And so to hear this just means, hey, man, it ain't our fault you can't recruit hmm. or that the program has went right. down to the point that no one wants to go there. And this ain't even KD fault. Let's go even back further because KD my DC boy. So I ain't, this ain't KD. Say it. This ain't even Bron. What made LeBron leave Cleveland in the first place? Get was no going up against KG, who I love to death. Paul Pierce. Paul, Paul Pierce, Pierce and Ray Allen. Oh, they initially started this, mm -hmm. hey, let's team up. But in the NBA, it's so different. When I have the ability to max my contract out at whatever, let's throw around number 15 million. Mm. Why would I take 15 million and stay here and be a lone star where I have all the pressure when I can go and make the same amount of money and team up with two or three other guys Better. and win rings? Because we in the media don't really care about your MVPs. We don't care about your scoring titles in the NBA. We don't care about how many Pro Bowls in the NFL. We're, we we want to see them rings, period. And so, you know, I was a guy growing up. I, you know, I wanted Pro Bowls. I wanted the individual success, interceptions. As I kind of matured in the game, I was kind of like, 
you know, no one really cares right. how many Pro Bowls I made. Mm -hmm. No one really you did. cares. You did. That yeah, more yeah. important than them. You're you right. You're but, right. <laughs> but the championships are ultimately what would put you in the Hall of Fame category or conversation. And that's what guys are seeing. Like, look, it's about the team's success and winning championships, not my individual success. I think it's unfortunate because Miami, being great so long ago, that they got the best of the best mm -hmm. that wanted to go there. Mm -hmm. Okay? They Nebra shot mostly at home, though. But, but oh, okay, yeah. but I'm saying, but Nebraska back then got the best of the best. Notre Dame got the... They, these schools that were winning, right. kids wanted to go to. So what he's talking about in regards to kids basically saying, I want to be a part of something that's going to grow to winning. That's, that's a tough ask in today's world. Yeah. Now, but a lot of kids do want to individually say, you know what? I'd rather be the man at some place. I get it. When I went to Ohio State, listen, we weren't that great, but I knew that Gary Williams was building a program, so I get what he's saying. But it's not about KD and the NBA. Yeah. From that perspective, you look, Miami, dog, you're talking about consistency. I, I, I know what you're talking about with the education part, too. Man, come Miami. on, balance this out. But you're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six years, okay? You got four different coaches. Mm. You had the scandal stuff that's going on. Mm. So that's a program issue. That had nothing to do with the NBA and why kids don't want to go a there. Point. You know what I mean? That's an instability issue. So they don't view Miami like they used to. Nah, used they to be and let's that's, talk, uh, oh, that's a good point, but I, I want to light you up a little bit. <laughs> let's go. Let's I want to light you up. Let's go. Uh, you love saying light the torch versus carry the torch. Mm -hmm. Manny Diaz is talking about relighting the Miami torch and choosing that path rather than going to the easy route of just go to Alabama or just go to uh, Georgia or just go to the programs that are already on top. He's talking about lighting, relighting the torch in Miami. Well, I, I wish he was in the pure spirit. You may be, but he's not because this is the same guy who went to Temple. Um, he was the defensive coordinator there, went to Temple for three weeks, pulled to Cliff Kingsbury, <laughs> and said, you know what? Oh, y'all firing dudes down there? I'll be back at the right, U and the right, OU. You want to know why you can't recruit? You only been there three weeks. You know why nobody want to be there? They at Temple. They thought you was at Temple, coach. Like, like, don't miss me with that. And then I know what he wants. And look, you have to earn that. I went to a sorry football school, all respect to Columbia, at the time because I wanted to you got to have one hook for me. Right. So if the U has inconsistency on the sidelines, instability in the program, mm -hmm. and not consistently great, what's the hook? And you don't have a hook. Columbia South at least beat. gave me they education. Beat. South beat. That's about it. Back back nice but, hold on. But, but if I'm a parent, I don't Tootsies. Care. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Let me, let me hit you with one. That's not a hook. I ain't been there, but I heard it. I heard it, right. But if I'm a parent, too, yeah. with a highly recruited athlete, and I look at everything that's went on at Miami, mm -hmm. am I really going to put my kid in that situation? Say it. Okay? I'm not going to do it. In college basketball, there's a reason why Duke, North Carolina, Kansas always continue to get the best of the best. Because a lot of stuff they've avoided. Now, Kansas is going through yeah, some stuff right, right. right. now. Dukes has but, they, but, but they've always kind of been there and avoided a lot of the scandal stuff. They've been stable. So it's easy for the top guys, the top four, re, top 25, four of the top 25 recruits, okay, went to Duke this year. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Yeah. They could have went anywhere else. Yeah, easy Eight, route. Is what, yeah. is but, they, what, but they've been doing it with Duke. Forever. They've been doing Way it before with KD. Way before KD. Way before because KD. Because they knew at the end of the day they had a chance to compete for a national championship and they can go to the league. I mean, and can we tell... Go, go, go ahead, Whit. No, I, I want to just go back to his Kevin Durant and LeBron and I'll even throw in Paul Pierce and those guys' point. Y'all can't tell me the young people today haven't been influenced by all of this and influenced by social media in terms well, everything's a group think mentality people are very afraid to have independent thoughts take independent actions blaze their own trail people are, let's go huddle up with this person or that person i can't stand on my own two feet i think that's his larger point it's not said well he's you know translated all down to miami but i think that's his larger point Y'all got kids? No, no, you're absolutely right. Everyone wants instant gratification yeah. right now. No one wants to work for that and grind hard. And so, mm. obviously, it's easier. I mean, that's why you know, I don't agree with that. I mean, you don't. I no. wanted. I wanted. These millennials work smarter, not harder. We worked harder, and we well, think that was better. No, it, 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 it's you're right. You get it's, to that top of the mountain, either way it goes, you can take a it's, helicopter. It's not always better, and that's kind of was my approach. Like, yeah, I was the number one corner, and I follow guys around. But I can remember it was a time in Washington where we had a chance to get uh, Aqib Tlaib. And I was fighting trying to get him. 
And I wasn't selfish like, oh, man, we bringing another top corner in. Look, look, I'm tired of covering these dudes all over the field and living and dying with me. Sometimes I'm hurting and I'm still going out there sacrificing it. Mm -hmm. I want another dog opposite me. We didn't work it out and it didn't happen. But through the course of my career, I wanted to play with other great players because I knew it would elevate my game and ultimately make my job easier. Let me ask you this. JC, you understand this. With, is it more of a societal issue with the parenting? Because when we were all coming up, you couldn't quit if things didn't go right. Parents pushed you a certain way. Now I think what I see is a lot of parents allow their child, if things don't work out right away, well, you know what, coach? You ain't playing my son, yeah. I'm moving you. You're yeah. not doing this, I'm putting you to. Exactly. So now for a kid, they want the easy way out because they're being taught that lesson by their parents. I'm going to push back and defend parents in this regard. Okay. What's different now, Jim, though, is the parents are so aware of how much money's on the line. Mm -hmm. If my kid can get on the field and get to one of these leagues, NBA or NFL or mm -hmm. Major League Baseball, mm -hmm. and, and so it's like, Riding the bench at a Power Five conference when you think you're a pro level I'm, well, player. I'm talking about at that level. I'm talking about when they're young. So we're oh. talking about when they're young. So now they're making the decision. You're talking about why young kids want to take the easy route. I'm saying when they're being taught by their parents yeah. when they're yeah. young that if it doesn't work out this way. Because there's well, countless kids that's on my son's teams and yeah. daughter's teams that they might not like the spot they're at as, exactly. at an all-star cheering team. Oh, she, we're, we're not in the front, so we're going to go to this gym where we get in the front. Or, uh, you know, we're not playing as much as we thought. Oh, so we're going to go to this other travel team or this other high school football team. You know, no one wants to go through the adversity the of waiting your turn or grinding That's it true. out. That was the most important lesson mm. I taught my son was, look, you might not be playing as much as you want to right now. Don't worry about it. It's something to be said about hard work and stand mm -hmm. on the grind and waiting your turn. Got okay, but for my, for, for my thing is, I see parents now having a deep anxiety from the generation before where we, we grew up, our parents were our authority figures. And more so now, mm -hmm. parents are more on, well, let's be friends and go through this shared experience, right? That turns into when you see your kid, he has talent, it's, it's time to monetize that, whatever <laughs> level, whether it's scholarship or it's pro potential, right? Yeah. And then when you're trying to monetize them, what happens? Those incentives shape your behavior. So do you sit on a lottery ticket or do you look at the expiration date and say, I got to cast this in? And if you won't let this opportunity arise in this program or with this coach, I don't think it's an issue to say, I got to go somewhere and get this ticket. But how many times do you move go. when it doesn't help? Gotta go. When it Coming doesn't up. happen. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's yeah Antonio point. Brown soap opera is getting more dramatic by the day. The best and worst of social media. Next.